What's up, what's up, guys? Mikey here for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council with our favorite intern, uh, Jonathan. The, the guy who butchers stuff like this. <laughs> uh, don't don't take it don't 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 take it personally, man. I don't take anything personally. I won't roll YouTube. Is you have to have a big oh, skin. Oh, screw, well, screw you too. Anyway, uh, welcome to this video. It's gonna be like possibly a yearly thing, and it is for the discussion video of all the packs of 2016, or rather, all the packs of the previous year, along with what we think is was the number one pack of that year. So. Obviously, we will be doing 2016, and I wanted to get this out like early January, but my time get my my time schedule was really really fucked up. I, I can't say any better than that. And so mine is going to be kind of screwed over eventually, but I'll talk more about that at a later date. <laughs> yes. So, um, basically, how how this is gonna go? It's like 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 how uh, we they we used to do a top ten. For a pack of the, for a top ten pack, we're basically gonna break down all the packs of 2016, and then uh, both gonna decisively uh, come to a agreement of which pack was the number one pack of 2016, which had a big effect on the game, or just had the most use out of the other packs. So enough talk. I guess I'll start it off with Breakers of Shadow. Now this was the first pack of 2016, and it did bring us a lot of things. A lot of things. It brought us Dino Mists. It brought us Shira Inui. It brought us the the Omega, the Siphon Mode Omega Loop later down the uh, from oh, from 2015, I believe it was. Do. Yeah, <laughs> Jonathan, you remember that the Omega Loop? I was like, uh, all of a sudden, I, I was like, if we're just talking. We were just talking. Actually, we weren't even talking on Skype. I don't know. I was watching like on YouTube all the time. I, I get radio calls me on Skype. I'm like, Jonathan, come watch this duel. You have to say this. I, like, I, I just fucked my opponent up. Like, like what the hell happened? You, like, it, like it's a mega loop. Like, what the hell's going on? Really? Like, explain. He was, he was place testing with Shirayu and he made the Omega loop. Yes, it was disgusting. But yeah, that's what. Well, that's what uh, Bosch brought us. It brought us that. It brought us um. Uh, Goyo supported, but it brought us Buster Blade to support, but it, I know you guys don't care it about that. It gave us some more uh, Blackwing support. It gave us a little bit of Blackwing support, I was, I was on, along with Cosmo Tin Can, which oh. was a big help to the deck. Dark Eclipser, Delta Shutter, Shadow Storm, Stormtrooper, Cosmojo. It, it made Cosmos go off. Pretty much. It gave and us it gave us the... They needed, really. And it gave us the one card that everyone cared about, that everyone started picking up the Cyber no the Cyber Dragon Nova. It gave us Cyber Dragon Infinity. Exactly. And Sorcerer. Pendulum performed how Pendulum Sorcerer, which which skyrocketed Pendulum. Oh, yeah, I forgot that was an OG import. I, I forgot set. about that too. Until I forgot that was an OG that, import in that set. Like. Yeah. <laughs> it basically opened the door for a lot of a lot of old decks, a lot of new decks. It, it, it gave Pepe the break they needed until until the emergency ban list, along with Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, and it made a big impact on the game. But uh, we'll see if it made number one spot. And I'll leave it to Jonathan to talk about the next pack of the 2016, which was the next pack of 2016 was the Shining Victories. Uh, oh. This was a pretty big sex on the fact that it gave us. The blue eye support, like it gave us the the, the pork that boy needed to really do well, and that's pretty much a big thing. It also gave us one, probably one of the most retarded cards combined with ice spells that we have now. Crystal wing synchro dragon, <laughs> which is easy to get out with crystal uh, with ice spells. Plus, you can also get it out with the uh, Ultimaya. We all yes. love how crystal wing actually works with a monster. Uh, it gave us the Luna light. Archetype it released that if you were a fan of that person if you were a fan of that gave us a the performable audit you know and like Phoenix basically enhancing with the just pedal back even more allowing you to use Even more of a pep pay build than you could well, before Arguably that that actually enhanced an odd eyes uh, a solo odd eyes It did enhance that as well, but you saw a lot of mixtures of it. So yeah, I saw that two good cards uh, I saw like a mix that. Then, but yeah uh, again, and, but it gets a couple of raid wrap because more raids for like a vengeful for pain ladies and boost the strix, so it's not bad. It and it gave off, us, 
And it gave us um, the ability to not use Maiden in Blue Eyes anymore. Exactly. You can still use it, but you don't have to use it. Uh, the Morph yeah. Aegis, uh, Realm Saber shit. <laughs> Literally, uh, that, gave us, oh. that also gave us Ghost Reaper and uh, Cherries, which was kind of oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, I know, uh, it did. Uh, yeah, High Speed Rush Puzzle. And it gave us uh, Assault Black Control, the Rain spr Sprinkling, which was the uh, level 7 monster. It had Spirit Dragon. You also gave us right after Ultimate Falcon for people who right. also troll with that. And then you so had basically, a bunch of Cosmo cards like uh, Dark Lady, Dark Planet. Right. Uh, you also had the Fire King Island, which came in a set. Uh, oh, yeah, that was a big comment for that. That was so. a big comment. That was a big thing in Cosmos. It really helped the deck get off. It also had right. the Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon as well. Yes, the as well as so, a couple of kaiju cards, like the kaiju files, was in there as well. If you so, so this cards. basically just lifted up Blue Eyes and Cosmos to a new Pretty level. Pretty much for a lot of different things. You saw Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries and right. a lot of decks at the time. And, and it also, also... It gave us Red as Toon Dragon. You know, if you were playing oh, yeah. Toons at the time, you know, that's a pretty good card for yeah. and it and it and, and it was the set that allowed Blue Eyes to top world. Mind you, well, it was a world to reason. Was, it was, was a set more like the bandits implemented, but we'll just well, and the band there. and the bandwidth, but and the bandwidth, the but the bandits had implemented it kind of helps again, again, again. The archetype, the archetype of blue eyes just, just skyrocketed to it, a point it really did. It skyrocketed where they had player. the and power still, to win, and it's still not the most cheap deck to build, even though you don't see it yeah. as often as you did back in the day. Well, like unless that. you're doing a desireless, if you're doing a desire build, it's pretty expensive, but desireless build, I can say from. From since I bought a Blue Eyes deck recently, we'll talk about that later, guys. It was relatively cheap. It was like less than three hundred, so still at a good price to pick up the whole deck for. And it could be less depending on the rarities you like. Oh yeah, like recommend it if you want to go for you should get some. If you don't want to go blow your wallet, just go for the lower rarities. You don't have to get the yeah, most expensive yeah. rarity, pretty looking card because it's the same card, the same effect. <laughs> it's just not as pretty looking, you know. It's pretty looking. Like, uh, all right. So, so after that, the shiny, the success shiny victories. We have the Millennium Pack. Now I know this isn't part of the mainline sets like Break Us a Shadow, Shining Victories. It's not part of. It's not part of the main line. It's like a, a extra booster or a special booster that gave us Card of Demise. And I don't think there was anything else more big in this set than, than Card of Demise. Card of Demise is the card that really, like, for a while, pretty much set the standard for a lot of decks. It allowed a lot of stun decks to kind of get out there more. Like, you it saw Magic Specters power. use this. Yeah. Send you use that because of the way the chains work. There's a lot right. of stun decks in general could really abuse Card of Demise because you didn't really special summon a whole lot. And any right. spell trap cards you got, you can easily set them. And, you know, you don't have to re really worry about discarding cards. It was just a really right. stand-up card. You don't see it too much too anymore because of just the way the meta shift over the years, of course, in these couple formats. But it was just a really powerful card. And it's still a really good card to this day. Well, for the, just for the record, like, like this card, Cardamize was, like, just a flavor of the month kind of thing. Like, Pretty yes, much. it was good. You'll send you... The Ascendry's got a big boost out of it, and, and it made the deck a lot still, more helpful. And you still see the Ascendry's as a rogue deck, yeah. You still use it because of the way the chains work. Like, you can turn the right. deck to your hand after you discard, so that's right. really stupid. Right. Despite all the reprints that this set gave us, like, it was literally nothing but reprints. Carter Demise was the one card that made this set worth it and made the set uh, part of this video. And I can't say much more about this set since this was the literally... The only card next to the true name, which was a tech card, because I used it in Monarchs to get Alborisk. Don't ask how I did that, because I'm never doing I see, it again. I still, see, I still see people trying to uh, use true name. It was a combo with another card. Some people know Some people know the, the combo, but it's not very effective. Um, besides the the anime, the anime cards they gave us, like True Name, Left Arm Offering, Rebellion, uh, uh, the left and right... Uh, are the holding arms and holding legs, <laughs> and the Wing Dragon Rod Immortal Phoenix. That's that's a nifty little um, deck that people used to have fun with back when the set was released. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's about it. I mean, there's not much to talk about this side. It was mostly a repaint, so Carter Demise made this set worth all the all the more worth it. Okay. So next, what do we have next, John? We have Dragons of Legends Unleashed. Now this is pretty much the the third, and I'm assuming the final. I of hope Dragon so. Of Legends, as as of right now, assuming that they're not going to make more in the future, they might. I hope so. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> But anyway, Dragon Legend Unleashed, it brought a couple of cards to the play. First off, it uh, released some more of... It pretty much released the multiplying this year's cards, which, if you're a collector, you know, it's more power to you, you know. Uh, the Ice Mirage Dragon came in the set, so that powered up Ice base deck even more. Even though they don't, they don't have Persona or Phantom Dragon, which they actually... I think Phantom Dragon has a release date, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> when... Panel's about to get destroyed, but you know, it's, it's cool. It's coming finally coming, but it allowed the deck to function even more. Uh, it released the Cyber Angel support pretty much. You had like Petite Angel, Cyber Angel, Benton, uh, Dakini, so different things like that. Then you had some more of, of course, the number monsters. If you're a numbers hunter, people who like to collect the number cards, there you go, collection wise. <laughs> but, so it basically, so it basically gave us like the uh. The one hit wonder of uh what was it Safira Angels that that little mix yeah for like, for like the month yeah you saw that that was annoying to deal with with um Herald of Arclight and the cyber and the whole Herald of uh, Herald build it was really really stupid but probably the two big ones that really came out of this world of was the, of course the Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon which you can actually use that and pretty much any like any like blue eyes deck or Felgrin deck you kind of go through like full armor and then like. Uh, the Gazi, uh, the, I believe it's generic, so it, it could is be generic, but it, it any... requires, but you typically see it really in, like, uh, just Dragon X, because there's the easy, easiest ways to get it out, pretty much. Or deck that can use rank gates. Like pretty much. People... And, and then probably, like, in my opinion, like, the final really, uh, big one, outside, like, you do get, like, Night Express Line and stuff like that, I got some of the train stuff. Yeah. But, uh, the big thing is the fact that the Cardians came out in this set. Oh, God, no, I forgot about that. The Cardians came out, so, yeah, that was a pretty big one, you know, people like the Cardians, and, yeah, I forgot it came out in Dragon's uh, Legends Only. Well, hmm. well, personally speaking, I think Night Express Night was more of a bigger, like, upset, because people were waiting for this Night card Express for... Night Express Night is good, it is good for that, but I was kind of, like, going with, like, the yeah. entire archetype that people were waiting for, you know, not just, like, one card. So, like, people could finally play, like, the Cardi monsters they were playing on YG Pro right. or Dev Pro. They could finally play them in real life. That's kind of where I'm getting at, right. really. But but as for everyone who was playing Trains at the time, like, they were dying to see Oh, yeah, they were waiting for it to come out. They are like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> and when it time. finally came out, along with the field spell, everyone was happy. All, all the people who played Trains were happy. They got to mix it in. They got to splash it in as an engine or just use it as a whole deck. Yeah, it was just... All the people who didn't play Trains were, <laughs> were not happy. <laughs> they got to feel the wrath of Trains. Thomas Tank Engine. <laughs> feel the wrath. Uh, oh, God. So, uh... That's about it for you, right? Yeah, so uh, the next pack after Dragon's Legend Unleashed. How can you top the power of the train? No, the power of the Cardians. I know. You use magic. And we talk about the Dark Illusion. Now, literally, if you, some of you don't know, some of you who are new to the game, that is a literal set name, and I still don't agree with it till now. And it is probably one of the biggest changes to the to the game state that we have had besides this new the, the update to the master rules which gave us part of the desires the I don't know how to say it is like some people consider it really really broken some it, people it consider it really really bad desires, uh, depending, it depends on the deck you're running like there's some decks I would run in like Shadow New Zombies I would totally run in that because I can no, easily, yeah I know that but I can easily do Omega but decks like I say uh, for example Yang Zing or Black wings, or oh, they can't use them. They can't use I can't, them. or hell, some people are using blue eyes. I would never use them blue eyes because I don't want to risk milling my blue eyes and then not be able to play the deck. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, but it's, like, it's also it's also the flavor of the player because sometimes not even the player can consider a card good but don't like it. That's exactly. that's me. That's I, I, I me. Think, I think Desires is a good card because it right. deck ends your deck by twelve fucking cards. But it can easily, but. 
again, every card has a counter, and it I does. and, uh, and we've all and we've talked about the counter to this card multiple times on the channel, which is, and if you guys don't know, it is mystical ref panel, and it is really stupid how how ref panel counters it because, and this is just a fun fact, the ruling state that. The cost, of, well, you guys should know, the cost of desires is to banish 12. Banish 10. I banish 12. <laughs> banish, t- banish 10, draw 2. Now, Ref Panel is a counter trap that states whenever a spell card targets a player, and this ruling is legitimately confirmed that Pot Desires does target the player because it targets the deck, you can use, you can use Mythical Ref Panel after your opponent pays the cost so you can draw 2 cards. Which is really, really retarded. Or you can just play Destiny or Diamond Dude and just get two free cards off the card. God damn anything. it, Jonathan. Don't ruin my life. <laughs> hey, I've but done yeah. it. It's hilarious. I know you've done it. Because cause, cause you just like messing with your opponent. I'm going to sack you. Anyway. Uh, so what did this set bring to the table besides Pod as Well, obviously, it brought a whole shit ton more of Pepe stuff. And now... Bottom. The Dark yeah. Magician's Apart. Oh yeah, that was a big thing. It, brought, it gave us Magician Navigation, and it, bring, it gave us Dark Magic Circle, along with Blackwing Gofu, and made some really stupid plays, and made Metal Foes even more hyped later down the line. Oh, definitely. It also gave us Triamids. Uh, I have not seen people play Triamids, but it did give us... A, a, it got, it's, it's, it's kind of fallen off. Yeah, it really. fell. It, but... It gave us the the beginning of Metal Foes. Pretty it gave us Volt Flame, Gold Driver, Silver Rod, Stealing. It gave us Masterpiece, the Draco Slayer, and it gave us the beginning of True Kings. It gave us the Fire True King monster. Thus, the archetype was born. Thus, the archetype was born. Yes. It also gave us uh, more Shirayui support. It gave us uh, the Fairy Tail Snow that everyone's going to be using on lawn mowing decks. Oh yes. And it gave us the Blackwing support that everyone was waiting for. It gave us Onimaru. It gave us So High of the Rainstorm. It gave us Coral Dragon, which is really, really good in many decks. That oh, play yeah. Coral Dragon is stuff. a fantastic yeah. card. If you, if you can make a level 6 Synchro Monster and you're not playing Coral Dragon, I don't know what's wrong with you. You might want to rethink your life. I'm sorry. <laughs> And it gave us Floodgate Trap Hole, which is still oh, used one today. Of the, my opinion, still one of the best cards in the game. If you're not playing Floodgate Trap Hole, what the hell is wrong with you? Go get his place in Floodgate Trap gotcha. Hole and piss off your opponents. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave us continued support for Paleozoics, along with more Spiral Gear stuff. And it gave us, it gave us Revolving Switchyard and the Hidden City, so it made... Subterra trains way more viable, and I've seen someone do that once before, and it's really, really, really. I don't I've even want to play it. Once on Pro, and it was actually a pretty interesting deck. I liked it a lot. The RNG in real life is way more bullshit. Oh, I will say that. that I will. Oh, RNG fucking wind your pro, man. It's like <laughs> it's computer shuffling your deck. Like, come on, just give RNG to that. But yeah, this was a really big set for for the year of 2016 of Yu-Gi-Oh and for the game because. It, like, completely opened the game up to what was considered a lot more originality in the game for a very long time. It was basically after Dark Illusions that we we saw more originality in the game that we haven't seen for the past for the past three, four years. Mm-hmm. So, I was pretty happy and sad at the same time because this started Floodgates as well because part of Desires was a thing the whole time. Yeah. The whole time. And that's my take on it. And again, like I said, these these uh, little overviews of sets, they're not meant to be like a full scale overview. It's just like a small, a small, teeny, teeny, like Crazy an Basically what they brought to the table in the game yeah. as a whole and how they, in a sense, affected the game if, you know, big or small, whether you're just a collector or you play right. NYCSs or just your locals, you know. But that's enough about me and Dark Illusions. Jonathan, what's no. your magic trick? My magic trick is... The power of the destiny. We have destiny oh, no. soldiers. I don't like destiny. It it fucks with me once. Destiny soldiers. This is a set that brought a bunch of new destiny hero support, which is pretty cool because destiny heroes really needed some new support. And the heroes kept yeah, getting they... brand new support year after year after year <laughs> after year. But destiny heroes, 
really the only CS heroes you ever played was really your Diamond Dudes for its effect, your Mallies for its effect, and that's, eh, in case you want to be that guy, the Doom Lord, because why the hell not? <laughs> Banish things out. But with your Destiny Hero support, it gave more, it gave more better of a Destiny Hero engine. Then you had things like, of course, Dystopia, Dark Angel, which was pretty cool, finally came out. Uh, yeah. Celestial, again, another card that was in the anime, finally came out. I also uh, reprinted things like Malicious and Plasma, Dogma, things that haven't really been reprinted in terms of Destiny for a while, I, I think, which is really good I for think, the deck in general. I uh, think Malicious needed a reprint for a very long uh, time. Destiny for also got, a, I, I might pay much in your reprint. Yeah, they they both did, con but considering Malicious like was heavily used for the uh, Omega Loop and for Dark Synchro, like oh, we really need we really needed that because I'm not paying twenty dollars for a secret rare Malicious. I'm not doing that. No, uh, this set also fuck the Abyss actors. I have yet to play Abyss actors. I have yet. To, the deck I, is I, fun per from personal experience. The deck is. Fun, I have yeah. yet to play it. I need to get to it before things happen, <laughs> but. Uh, it brought that, so it's pretty cool. Then, the all-powerful Dark Lord support. Oh. That came in this set. Don't oh. forget, it also gave us, don't forget, um, it also gave us the name changes to Marie the Fallen One oh, and, yes. and the Lord. other, yes, the and the other one. Their name changed Dark Lord, with, uh, with change. and Dark Lord yes. Mary. There which, you go. Nurse Rescue, reprint. Yeah. After how many years has this card been expensive? Because, oh, if, like, because this card was what printed in what Tag Force Two, I want to say, so it got released. Which card? Which card? Oh, uh, Nurse Reptile. Oh yeah, it was it was ex ridiculously high. Like, because just because it was, like, it was I think a it was like printed what its last print. You know, I'm not I'm not counting this. It one, was one. Like Tag Force I think Two, was, I think. Was yeah, one? but I think it was originally from one of the games. It was one of the games. Uh, it came, it came, for, it was a print in one of the games, I think it was Tag Force, it was one of the Tag Force games, I believe. Yeah, but I think it, so This too. is literally what made Nurse Burn expensive, was this one card. Because it was like 40 yeah. plus dollars because of how, like, rare it was to get. Jonathan, you know all about this, because I never touched Nurse Burn, but I know it was very expensive. I never really touched Nurse Burn, I played online, but I was yeah. curious on the price of Nurse Burn, because I right. knew how, like... And this is rare. Reptical was. I was kind of curious how much she was, just since you know it wasn't a popular deck. I was going to see how cheap it was, and seeing that Reptical was like over forty bucks, that was ridiculous. That made the deck so expensive. But this maybe so you want to be a troll nurse burn. It made it really really cheap. Yeah. But that really all in all uh, was the the. It was the best thing. He had some other reprints like a Van Straw, Valhalla. Uh, you know, I think did it have? I don't think it was Lord. No, I don't think a Lord Dark. Yeah, Lord Darkness was reprinted in here as well. Uh, Dark Hole. If you didn't have a million Dark Holes already. <laughs> it also it also gave us trade in, which was kind of needed. Oh yeah, also it... came with Arsenal Christia. Yes, it did. So that was actually it, pretty good. It had a really, really good set, and yeah. So In actually, terms of reprints, yeah, it did. Definitely, and it, it came with a nice pendulum based deck, the, the hero support, and a shit ton of dark floor support. And it gave us the new, and it gave us a more consistent uh, dark lord lockout kind of thing, or like kind of like a lockout kind of build that I yeah. that I play, which involves um, dark lord desires and archlord Christia. I believe it's Desires or it's something else. I don't. I remember. have never touched the Dark Lord, so I have no idea. Basically, it's it's. I believe it's Dark Lord's Desires. Special summons uh, a level. A, special summons a level eight, a fairy type monster from your graveyard, and you can summon uh, Christia with it. And you have two level eight monsters on the field, and your opponent cannot special summon. Huh. It's a really funny move. Yeah, I think it's an older move though. It's all. It was older, but now, but with the new Dark Lord support, it's yes, more consistent. consistent. Yeah, I remember. I, mean, I think I remember seeing that like back in the day, like when uh, Dark Lord stuff yeah. first came out. People were doing that, yeah. like Athena uh, Burn stuff like that. With the original Dark Lord stuff, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's so after the power, of the, after the power of that destiny has showed us, what was the next? It's time, time for the. It's time for the invasion. Into the synchro dimension. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, okay. Uh, I'm, so, the next and final set of 2016 will 
did bring us Invasion Vengeance. And everyone knows what this brought us, because everyone knows the hell that came with it. Uh, it Star, gave... Venom, Fusion Dragon. Well, besides that, it gave us... <laughs> well, for the people who enjoy Chris Johns, we got Chris Johns, and we got more Cardian support. And Cardians were playable after this. I know, right? And it was... And it was a, one of the things. One of the things like I found interesting that you can summon the Cardian cards finally. Yeah. I, I I remember like I saw the Cardian synchro. Like, how do I summon you? And then I saw oh Cardian cards. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we also got more performer pass support. And this was the last. Well, close. This was we're, we were almost we're almost done with the performer pass support at that point because the anime is ending and there's not much cards more to go over. Well, not uh, like the end we got, the ending, it's more the fact that... Well, it was, it was near the end. Hmm? And we got the second of the... We got the second of the three disasters. We got the True King, Bartharos, the Fathomer, the Water One. We just need to wait for the third calamity, which is Maximum Crisis. Yes. <laughs> and we got to see Kemi Critters, which I don't know why it didn't thrive, but I would love to see this deck come back at one point it also but the set also gave us a uh, torque tune gear a tech card that i looked at personally it gave us the next the second fairy tale card which was sweeper and it gave us uh, as jonathan said starving venom fusion dragon which is really stupid for what it does and it yeah, gave uh, and, but the fact yeah. is you need to have two dark marks on the field or something that kind of makes up for the fact you can't use things yeah like, uh yeah. you can't just use like Banish two dogs from the grave with dragon right. there, you know. And uh, I know we, I know I haven't gotten to the coup de gras yet, but we're, we're building up to it. We, we gave us full metal fold, the more metal fold support, which made metal folds way more viable because of the two fusions they gave us. And we got Yang Zing support for the first time in a long, long the time. The most needed Yang Zing support. The most, you. yeah, you're, you're right about that. Along with um, part, of, part of Acquisitiveness and Full Metal Fold Fusion, I can talk about it now, guys. We have obtained Dimensional Barrier and Tree Toad. And not calling it by the TCG name. You guys can go screw yourselves. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, Tree Toad and Dimensional Barrier basically opened the doors for Palazor Frogs and, and uh, Hero Frogs and all the frog engines that you see. And the fact that Dimensional Barrier was the, the utmost counter to any monster summoning type out there currently. I'm sad to say that this card will be useless against uh, Link Monsters since... Uh, well, you can read the text. And, and, and before it becomes like a tier 1 deck. <laughs> Shut up, Jonathan. <laughs> also, it gave, gave us Summon Gate, which was something I wanted to mention. Because Summon Gate is a pretty strong, but I think some of them it's a bit stronger. Of course. Along with uh, the, I believe this was the last of the Paleozoic support that they were supposed to get, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, that should be the, la it is the last of it because, like, that, they didn't get any more support, and it past what we got, so. Right. But yeah, out of this set, we got a lot. We got Metaphor hype, and we see, we saw the Metaphor engine thrive in Worlds, in ARG, in, in YCS. We saw it thrive for a very long time. We saw... Free Toad Heroes Thrive, we saw, and this, and we saw a lot, because this was about the same time, or before then, that ABCs came out, I'm not sure about the time frame of ABCs, but yeah, we gained a lot of, a lot more diversity in the game, as previously mentioned, and this was like, the, the doors opening for the game, and, until they announced the Master Rule update. Pretty much. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Out of this, out of the set, dimensional barrier entry told changed the game a lot. It changed the meta a lot. It and it gave us more engines to work with and more diversity and originality to be born out of this, which I have really enjoyed because I didn't mind playing pa against Palazoics. I didn't mind playing against frogs. They brought back frogs with this, and I was like, and I was really happy because it was an archetype that I did not see get pushed. Since the uh, Frog Monarchs. And it was really interesting to see how they went about it. So, 
that was the Voss pack of 2016. We actually forgot Follow one pack. We did we? Yeah, we did we? Did out of order back to OL. Jonathan. I didn't realize it. What pack did we forget? We forgot Ring Raiders. Did we? Uh huh. Well, we should talk about it. It was out of order of my taps, which was my accent. It actually, maybe it actually came before Destiny Soldiers. Uh. But ah, there we I, go. My, okay. tab, my tabs were out of place. I didn't realize it it's until okay. I was... Yeah. Well, what, your game Wing Raiders last, guys. Well, there you go. Why not? Uh, so, Wing Raiders, probably one of the... Like, out of Destiny Soldiers, like, it, in terms of just, like, what it did for the game, it was... I don't think it was better than Destiny Soldiers because it brought the Phantom Knights that have been so often by Burning Abyss players because, yes. you know, that deck... Well, it didn't really get completely destroyed by the list, but it did get hit. The Phantom right. Knights, you know, like boots and all that stuff, allowed the deck to function more better, and you got to see Great it right even more. Yeah, we get to see it thrive a lot more, you know, right. and it pretty much brought back to life. And not only that, we got to see rank three decks a lot more. Oh, definitely. Besides PK Fire. People started trying to mix in Phantom Knights with Ghost Tricks, or just teching in Phantom Knights as an engine in some decks at that time. Oh, uh, we also had a lot of radar support, like Saddle Light Cannon. We got uh, the Force Tricks was finally released in the TCG. Oh yeah. I think yes. with Tribute Lanius, that was actually very good. Also, Last Tricks, which allowed you to go for the Ultimate Falcon play, that was of course released, <laughs> and the Shining Victories. Uh, it's got the Super Quantal uh, Monsters, Super Quantal Monsters, where we I all think... know of the Goku Power Rangers. <laughs> and it, it had some decent reprints. It had, like, a Harpy Harpist. So if you're having issues, you can that card. You know, oh, the Harpy support. Right. Harpy Harpist um... came in there uh, as a rare. Uh, also, if you wanted to play Gojik Alucard, they had a reprint as well as number 101, if you're having right. issues that. Uh, number 15, Diamond Crab King was also in the set. As well as cards like Bomb Chapel, Icarus Attack, uh, Call of the Haunted, Forbidden Chalice, if you want it, as well as Swallow's Nest. That needed a reprint for a very yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah, as well as Nest got the reprint and another Royal reprint, but, you know, it had, a, it had a lot of good stuff. But, in my opinion, the highlight of it was really the Phantom Knight stuff, because that just really boosted Burning Abyss even more. Like, and the, the, Force Strix. And four strikes. Four because... strikes was a big thing, but in terms, of, but that, but that didn't really do a whole lot in terms of being played versus the Phantom Knights, which really gave back the speed that Burning Mist had lost from those previous little hits. Right. So that was probably the biggest thing, and of course the Super Quantum, the Power Ranger deck that people loved. That I know Ryu I... loved playing because he loved doing that shit. So it, it think... was a really, really good set. I forgot what consoles opened the door to. They, I know they made an impactful. Uh, they made an impact on a on a deck, but I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. It, it, I don't remember what deck it really. It was just made the fact that you can use things like uh, what was I think it was the. I don't remember, but it was one of the exceeds that opened the door to some to something. I just can't remember what it was right now. I can't remember what it is right now, but I will probably remember. Later down the line, when this video was red, like the lion one, because you can. Yeah, it, it was the lion one, but I don't remember what it was for. Uh, probably like it rank, uh, five base decks probably, or like. No, it, it's it still a used card because I say it's time. It's still a used card, but it was it was for something else. I can't remember right and now, but yeah. Remember the member of the board that got the super quantum mech key, yeah. Magnus. <laughs> oh my God, Jonathan. All right, so that would sum up, Wing Raiders, right? Pretty much. All right, guys. So we are not done with the video. So don't think this is a wrap up because now it's what you've been waiting for. What is the number? What was the number one pack of 2016 uh, in your eyes and our eyes and the eyes of everyone playing Yu-Gi-Oh? So before but, we uh, yeah, before we yeah before we uh, announce ours, write down in the comment below what, what you believe was the number one pack of 2016. What you believe what was the most the most impactful, or just write down your favorite, because you know everyone's got a favorite, including us. So before we announce the number one pack, what is what was your top favorite sets, Jonathan? Uh, first off, it had to be 
character Shadows because it brought Dino Mist. I enjoy Dino Mist a lot because of the fact that, you know, yes, you can get Infinity Spam with it, but it's the fact that you can also play a card of Curry. You made another card of Curry deck. Uh, right. You know, you, if you wanted to, you can go Infinity Plus Tree Toad. And it's just overall a really nice deck, and I really like the fact that if you have, like, a nice, decently good machine penalty deck that can abuse things with limited removal and not really get hurt by it because you can revive all these kind of monsters. And the fact that they can protect themselves from destruction effects as well as from battle. And yeah. also, of course, it, it did bring out Blue Eyes. No, no, I haven't seen Blue Eyes stuff for. I have fucking shiny victories in my fucking head, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I do! Uh, fuck you, Crystal uh, Wing. Uh, but it brought a lot of good stuff into the game in general. It adds more perform power support, but I do really like the. Just the number stuff in general. And, and then right. the other one had to be Dark Illusions, mainly because of the fact that it, it brought the. Much of you love it, because Sunny Victory is bought in, like, the the Blue Eye support, it bought in all that love, and then the Dark Illusion bought yeah. the, the Dark Illusion support that was needed. Even though I still right. feel like Blue Eye's got the better end of the deal in terms of support. Oh, they uh, definitely did, because it definitely did. Dark uh, But Dark Magician still got some really, really good support, and yeah. it really made the deck even better. It made right. a really good archetype out of it. Uh, also, had, uh, like, like this other support, like Black Wings and stuff, just more support for other decks. Yeah. But it was overall was a nice set. And, of course, they bought Pot of Desires, too, though. To as for one. my top two, I would have to say, as the number three spot would have to go, before the number one spot, the number three spot would have to go to Wing Raiders, because I just loved Raid Raptors as as a whole. Like, the deck was super fun. It was an archetype I could get into, because, you know, as a Blackwing player, I enjoyed the hell out of Blackwings. <laughs> and I, I would just naturally feel the same way about Raid Raptors, and... The number two spot would have to go to Shining Victories because, you know, Kaiba's a badass. I, I have to give it to him. And all the blue-eye support that they gave that man is just obscene and insane. So, that that's from my opinions. But like I said, everyone's got a favorite. Everyone's got their own personal uh, vendetta. So, write down in the comments below. But for now, the number one pack of 2016... Would be considered to be Jonathan. Drum roll, please. Uh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Dark Illusions. <laughs> so yes, Dark Illusions, in our view of the game, of the experience that we have had, is Dark. Uh, would be the most impactful set to the year of 2016 and to the game as a whole, because it gave us part of the desires. It gave us the uh, Paleozoic stuff, it opened a lot of gateways to a lot of things for later down the line. Hmm. Jonathan, eh? anything yeah, to add sorry. to that? I'm, like, how did you on the past? Still kind of talk from work. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, though, it, it, it's kind of hard to see because a lot of these packs had a bunch of good generic cards. Like, yeah, like Dimensional yeah. Barrier and stuff like that. Hell, Chris and Wing Single Drag, he's a fantastic card. But it's like the fact that things like Five Desires is just a very special card. I know Barrier is, but... Yeah. It doesn't deck the deck by 12 cards. <laughs> it, like, it made... And it gave more power to Shinra Nui, because again, it goes even Mega, and it gave him more Mega Fodder, so even if you banish all the things like Mizuki, it didn't really matter. The Palozoics, but it's just a fantastic deck, it's very powerful, and it's definitely a fan favorite right now in terms of uh, the player base, because right. it's just very trap heavy, and people like having trap heavy decks. And it, can use and it opened opponents. the door to Metal Foes, it opened the door definitely. to. Um... To a lot of things. So Dark Magicians specifically. Dark Magicians are still played now. It's still a rogue deck. It gave Metal Foes the beginning of their reign. It gave us Cosmic Cyclone. It just literally set the standard for a long time. Until until we got all the other stuff later down the line. Later down until now even. Until Raging Tempest. It still has an impact in the game. That's why it's so high in price. You oh, know? Yeah. So, you know, that's that's our take on it. You don't have to agree with us, but, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's what I will always believe. So, uh, let us know in the comments below what you guys think of this video. Again, this is going to be once per year kind of thing. I'm not going to go like all, we're not going to go all fancy on it. But, oh, no. yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and let us know if you want to see a video like this again for the year of 2017. It will probably come come out much sooner than this time frame but yeah and uh go check out our facebook go like us on facebook keep uh, uh keep updated we have a twitter 
Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, videos will be tweeted out, and whatever updates need to be updated will be tweeted out immediately. As well as to check, uh, go vote for what deck you want to see on Friday's live stream, and much more uh, next Friday's live stream, and much more to come in the following week. And I'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.